So I have some bad news. There's something that fish oil supplement companies don't want to tell you. And that's the fact that there are different kinds of omega-3s. And one particular kind of omega-3 cannot, absolutely cannot be found in a typical fish oil supplement. So I want to talk about different tiers of omega-3s because there's so much misinformation out there. People think that they can just eat a bunch of flax seeds and a bunch of walnuts and get an abundance of omega-3s and then it's going to have an effect within their body. So what I've done in this video is I've categorized omega-3s into three different tiers. Okay, tier one is going to talk about uh, the quantity, how much omega-3 you're going to get. Tier two is going to talk about uh, sort of the quality or the type. And then tier three is going to talk about specific delivery systems for those omega-3s so they can actually do what they're supposed to do within the body so we're not just getting led astray by typical marketing that's out there. Okay, so I do want to make sure you hit that little red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon so that way you're never missing out on the videos that I post up. You're always seeing fresh, blazing new content. I also want you to check out Thrive Market after you watch this video. So Thrive Market has some pretty unique products. They're an online grocery store, but one of the things that I really like the most about them is they have some of the highest quality sources of wild caught canned fish. So while we're talking about this video, they've got just all the relevant stuff. So I've been able to create keto boxes and fasting boxes specifically through Thrive Market. So please check them out after you watch this video. You can get things that Thomas DeLauer recommends in a simple grocery box. All right, first off, let's talk about tier one. This is going to be uh, the foods that have a lot of omega-3s. Okay, so we're looking at like flax seeds, like so much omega-3. We look at chia, tons of omega-3, walnuts, pecans. You're like, I could eat tons of these and have a great omega-3 profile. <clears throat> okay, unfortunately, they have something known as alpha-linoleic acid, which technically is an omega-3. And by far, flax seed is like 60% omega-3. So we would think that it's a ton of omegas, and it is but it's a form that's not really usable in the body. Well, it is to some degree. You see, alpha-linoleic acid has to go through a conversion process in the body. Only about five to 10% of omega-3s from ALA end up getting converted into a usable eicosapentaenoic EPA form. And less than 1% get converted into the highly desirable docosahexaenoic DHA form. So what this means is we'd have to eat so much just to get our actual allotment that we need that we'd end up spilling over in calories and end up gaining a bunch of weight anyway. So we're talking flax, we're talking chia, walnuts, and yes, even eggs, okay? So plant and land sources of omega-3s are simply not good. They're inferior to marine sources. I shouldn't say they're not good. They're actually still great. They're just inferior to a marine. You're gonna have to eat a lot of them. It doesn't mean that you should avoid them. You should still definitely get them in. It's better than eating high omega-6s. Okay, now let's talk about tier two for a minute. Tier two is the different types, okay? So we've got EPA, which is the abbreviation for echosapentaenoic, and then we have DHA, which is the abbreviation for docosahexaenoic. Okay, EPA is good for modulating bodily inflammation. Okay, combating cytokines in the body, uh, reducing blood triglycerides and therefore helping out just our overall blood lipid profiles, helping cholesterol, helping inflammation throughout the course of our body. Okay, so EPA is great, but it's not nearly as high of demand as DHA is. DHA is what comprises most of the fat in our brain. Okay, DHA is what triggers a lessened risk of Alzheimer's, dementia, even Parkinson's, all kinds of neurological disorders, but it's also what makes you feel sharp and crisp and function really well. Okay, so DHA is what we want. And DHA has its own specific pathways of getting into the brain, okay? Now, DHA modulates inflammation within the brain. So if you have uh, brain fog, if you're feeling cruddy, DHA is the way to go. And a lot of people take expensive fish oil supplements, which again, are great because they are gonna get you the DHA, but we're gonna talk about why they can kind of be debunked when we talk about tier three in just a second. So EPA, DHA, then down at the bottom of the spectrum, ALA from land sources. Now let's talk about transport for a second because this is something that people never talk about. They leave it right there with EPA and DHA. There are multiple forms of how DHA gets into the body, different delivery systems. We have what's called free DHA. This is just the plain old free floating fatty acid DHA that's floating around and can do its thing. Then we have something known as lyso DHA, which is DHA that is bound to what is called phosphatidylcholine. Very complicated word. It just means that it's bound to something specifically, so it has the ability to ride on a different transport vehicle. Let me put it like this. DHA in its free form, when we consume it, what's happening is it's coming into the body and it goes to the brain and it hits what's called the blood-brain barrier, which is what sort of envelops the brain and protects it. 
and it crosses through the blood-brain barrier via something known as passive diffusion. Passive diffusion is basically a, uh, almost like a gradient. It's like a pressurized system that creates two opposing pressures that allows DHA to sort of get sucked into the brain. This is great, and it allows for some absorption. But what happens if we have uh, a lot of brain inflammation that's making the junctions in the blood-brain barrier close up? Okay, that means less DHA can get into the body or into the brain. What about people that have specific genetic defects? Because they exist. If you know that you have the APOE4 allele, then you know that you have a genetic defect that makes it so that the blood-brain barrier has a tighter junction. This means that DHA can't get into the brain. The point is, is that you can eat as much DHA as you want in a free DHA form, but you're at the mercy of inflammatory markers within the body. You're at the mercy of a lot of other things. Okay, this is where the DHA that's bound to a phosphatidyl choline is going to help out a lot more because it hops on a specific transporter. It's called the MSFD2A transporter, and it's basically a free ticket through the blood-brain barrier for DHA. Now, lyso-DHA is something that you're normally gonna find in krill. You're gonna find it in high abundance in fish roe. Okay, so if you like fish eggs, not everyone does, you're gonna get a lot of it. We're talking like 35, 40% lyso-DHA coming from fish roe. So caviar, uh, if you like masago on your sushi, it's definitely the way to go. Krill oil supplements might have a little bit of lyso-DHA, but usually it's so refined that ends up getting damaged and the phosphatidylcholine bond ends up getting damaged. So by and large, you really can only get DHA in its actual lyso form from eating actual fish. Okay, you can't really get it from a supplement. That doesn't mean that you're totally out of luck, but it means that eating sardines, eating mackerel, anchovies, uh, salmon, herring, that's gonna be the way to actually get the lyso DHA. So even like eating a can of sardines, 1.5% of the DHA is still gonna be in a lyso form. Okay, whereas if you were to eat uh, fish roe, for example, 30 to 40% is gonna be in a lyso form. So you definitely are missing out by not eating the type of foods that are rich in it, but you're 100% missing out if you're going for a fish oil supplement, which by the way, once again, I'm not anti-fish oil supplements. I take them myself, okay, but I take them for the free DHA levels, knowing full well that I'm only getting the lyso DHA from the actual fish sources. So if it's just a matter of just trying to get past the texture a little bit, or maybe you just don't like the taste, you may want to strongly, strongly, strongly consider finding some form of fatty fish that you do like, because it's one of the only ways that you can truly help prevent some of this cognitive decline. So let me give you a study that makes some sense of this too. So the Archives of Neurology published a study, took a look at uh, elderly patients, 899 of them over the course of 9.1 years. Okay, they found that these elderly patients, uh, the ones that were in the upper quartile of lyso-DHA consumption, meaning they were at the uppermost uh, percentage of people that consumed lyso-DHA, they had a 47% less risk of dementia compared to everyone else in the bottom other quartiles. So just by consuming more of the DHA that gets used in the phosphatidylcholine bond form, we ended up having significantly less risk of cognitive decline and dementia, Alzheimer's. So let me give you a quick recap on what you might wanna consider consuming for each category, okay? So tier one, the land sources. Okay, we're gonna have flax seeds, 60% omega-3s. We're gonna have uh, chia, about 50. We're gonna have walnuts. We're gonna have pecans. Okay, those are probably the top uh, plant sources. Then we get into eggs. Okay, eggs do have some omega-3s, and if you opt for the eggs that have the higher omega-3 content, then that's gonna be really good. And they're ones that are fed foods that are higher omega-3, so always look for that label. It does help significantly. They're chickens that are fed things like flax and stuff like that. Uh, then we get into uh, the poultries, then we get into the grass-fed, grass-finished meats. The grass-fed, grass-finished beefs are gonna be the ones that are higher DHA content as well. So even though there is some ALA, it goes into the body, and remember, it goes through the fermentation and conversion process in the animal's body. So the cow ate the grass, the grass had some omega-3s, and the cow's body converted it into a usable form. So the high fat cuts of meat from red meat are going to be probably the best land sources of omega-3. Then we move into the marine sources for tier two. Okay, so the larger the fish, the higher amount of EPA to DHA. So we usually want smaller fish, okay? We want anchovies, we want sardines, we want mackerel, things like that. High amounts of the omega-3s, okay? Then we go into the lyso form. We need the form that is with its skin, with its bone, the whole form, okay? We also wanna be consuming the fish row whenever we can. We also wanna be taking a little bit of krill oil if we're gonna take it in the supplement form, okay? So there's the quick recap as far as foods go. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you in the next video.